Hi, I'm Ada, and you're watching Photolaryngism. Wanted to get to something a little bit different today, looking at command line based audio and video capture and how that integrates with other things, something really exciting called FFmpeg. I know it's been around for a long time, but I wanted to raise it and look into it and show what it can do for you. Let's do that. So once again, I'm Nate, this is Photo Learnings, and thank you so much for joining in. I do a lot of work on this channel to build a community of learning to surface the cheap or free art technologies that you can know about them and make good use of them. I'm really excited that you're here and joined in to see this new video about FFmpeg, which again, I realize is not new technology, but it's still very exciting and it's been kept up with pace of what's going on and, and modern technologies and all those things. So I'm really excited to, to drop into this and I'm really excited you're here to see it. So let's start by looking over here. So again, FFmpeg is a command line based tool. I know that this might not this is a little different in that we usually look at tools that are graphical and have an interface built into them. This is a tool that is an it is built as a command line interface. It does integrate with other things because it can be easily called by other tools like Krita, like Kden Live. There's a, probably a lot of others I haven't explored. These are just the ones that I've stumbled onto and discovered, hey, this is actually working inside of this. So to give some examples of this, of how it works, there are simple commands that you can fire, and there really are a lot of customizable options, by the way, I'll say that. I started with the documentation here because there's just so much to do. You could set video aspect ratios and specific codecs and set specific capture devices and audio devices and lengths of time and frame rates, and there's just all kinds of really cool stuff. So I'm gonna keep it basic so you can check this stuff out as, at your leisure. But I'm going to show you what kind of the rough, rough and dirty of what happens here. So there's a simple command here to actually get started. And I'm have it up on the screen here, which is FFmpeg. And really, I should say you have to go to where you save and where you download the executable because command lines work on where they, where they are unpacked. So in my case, just to give you a rough example, I downloaded this here to this, you know portion under downloads I'm working in Windows 10 obviously um, and that's where it lives so that's where I have to get to in a command line tool to actually access it you'll see the same path here if you're completely new to command line that's a simple process of doing CD or change directory and good practice to wrap it in quotes I use the double quote you can very easily copy the path here and in a command prompt, just right click, it'll drop it in there. If it doesn't for some reason, you can always right click along the top banner here, go to edit and then paste from there. All right. And then close the quote. All right. So once you do that, it will redirect where command prompt is looking for things. And then you can actually begin tapping into the different pieces of FFmpeg. All right. And that's where this command comes into play where you could fire this off. And I'll break this down very quickly in that of FFmpeg, it has a number of built-in tools, uh, whether you're gonna be capturing video from a direct show device, which is something that has high interactivity that can be called from programs or the operating system, you know, stuff like that. So D show, direct show, um, we're gonna set an input. Um, we set the video device, and this just happens to be what mine is called. You set an audio device, because that's what mine is called. And then you set an output path. If you're looking to discover what things you have attached, that's a very simple command, which if you go Google, it's, it's very simple, but I'll show it very briefly here. And that is this, which is ffmpeg dash list underscore devices true dash f d show dash i dummy. I don't know where the syntax comes from, but this is what it is. And I can show you what that does. And that spits out this, and it literally just gives you the names that you would use. And the name you're looking for here in this case is the one in quotes. Whether it's a video device, it'll tell you the difference. And then audio devices, you literally just get, get all the stuff between the quotes. <laughs> and then put that in the command. All right, so that's pretty straightforward, right? So with that, you can use to actually capture audio and video straight from the command line. 
which I have done. I unfortunately can't demonstrate it while I'm recording because that device is already in use. It can't double utilize it, but I can show you that having fired that command, it's in my list of executed commands here somewhere. There it is right there. <laughs> it actually will work and it will spit out a file when you're done, which I will play for you because I love you guys. So that's what happened. Now, what makes this cool about being a command line interface is that it becomes easier to call it from other things. And I'll get into that in a minute, but that's, that's why I get excited about this. Before I get off into that path though, I just wanted to quickly show at least how this fits into Kden Live. I mentioned it fits into Krita and really all Krita does is it references this same file. You just give it a path of where FFmpeg is and it really does the rest for you. It can export, it can transpose. Um, really it employs it in the sense of when you're doing the animation piece, you can actually export your animation as a video file, which is really awesome by the way. Uh, I did a video on that, go check that out. Um, but that's where Krita uses it. For Kden Live, it uses it for a lot more and being that it's a nonlinear video editor tool, um, it uses its conversion capabilities, it uses its output capabilities, it also uses its capture capabilities, which I did not know was there until recently. I went digging around and I found that there actually is some stuff there to be unlocked, but it's hidden. It's deep in the program. <laughs> what I had to do first is I had to go into settings, configure Kden Live, and there's this whole capture section here. And there's a couple different areas you could hook this into a capture card um, or some of the device, or you can use the built-in screen capture, uh, which is again a function of FFmpeg, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's a couple different profiles to use. I found, just to clue you in, that audio seems to have some problems within Kden Live when capturing. Um, I feel like I'm so close, and if this is your area of expertise, I would love to know if this is possible. What happens behind the scenes, and I know this from just checking logs, is that when you set up the settings here, anytime you're using the screen capture mode, it will automatically use the built-in utility of FFmpeg to screen capture, and all you have to do is tack on the audio piece if you really want to, or tack on any parameters. Unfortunately, at least in the Windows version, it's having problems where when I run it and the device name has parentheses and I can't see any way around that really, that's how it's registered, it crashes. It'll get the word microphone and it'll crash as soon as it hits a parentheses. So I can't figure it all the way through that. I've tried every kind of escape I know of. Uh, I've tried backslashes, multiple backslashes, double quotes, single quotes. Couldn't make it get past that and recognize that and get on the rest of the device. So it does work, however, when using just plain video which is still pretty cool. And I believe that I can demonstrate and I will try it. I did one capture before, but before I do that, uh, in order to expose the button, because now we know where the settings are, first thing you have to do is right click on top and enable the extra toolbar, okay, point one. And then once it shows up, you have to right click down there and configure the toolbar. And I'll demonstrate, presuming that the button is not there. You can go through your available actions. I'm just gonna type record and I can add that in as an option. That's really the capture button. And then we have it. So using just the mode of screen capture, which is what this is right now. This is the one of the baked in ones. I'm going to hit record. And other than the button kind of changes color slightly, you won't notice anything obvious, but I'll go through and do some things. I'll open up a window here and then I'm going to hit that button again to stop recording and automatically I get a file here uh, that has dropped in and you can see that that has done something. Now it may ask you to convert the aspect ratio depending on what you recorded, um, but you can see that over here is kind of tiny, but my mouse is moving around and it's doing stuff. You can see the window that I opened up. It worked, all right, pretty cool. So that's within Kden Live. Back to the command line. This is, you know, where it gets very exciting. You can build structured commands to do stuff. And a really basic example would be, let's just say that you wanted to trigger recording of something 
and you'll have to look up the command for frames because I don't have that on hand right now, but you want to record the command for something at 6 a.m., 9 a.m., some kind of predictable time. That's one example. In Windows, you can use the task scheduler. And what this enables you to do is to run things. You can have things fire off at scheduled times. I'm just gonna say create a task. And this is a whole other thing to look into, um, by the way, but I'll just kind of give you the, the, again, the very high level pieces of this, is you need to give it a name, you need to give it a trigger, which is when things happen. There we go. And you set when you want this to happen. You actually could schedule at a reoccurring time um, or just one time. Uh, so you have those options to work with. Under actions, this is actually where you start to to fire this off, and the way you, the simplest way you can do it, is by creating a batch file, a BAT. Now it sounds intimidating, but it's it's really very simple, and I'll walk this through very quickly. That I have a folder here. I made one before to make a brand new batch file. This is really simple. You right click anywhere, go to new, start with a text document, give it really any name you want and you have to change the file extension to dot B, well, just to BAT. If you can't see the file extension, you do need to enable that within Windows, um, which is under view, and you need to check on file name extensions over here, okay? So now that we have our batch file, you can right click and edit. It'll open up in Notepad, and you just start adding in the commands. So. We do have to tell it really everything we want to do, and that's a little bit of a nuisance, but again, not so bad if you know what to look for. So I'm gonna go through the one I already created and just walk through that. Let me add a line break in here so you can see it. So the first thing we already did this is the CD, the change directory, because we gotta tell the command prompt that's about to fire off what to do. A BAT, incidentally, just will inherently go to command prompt, so we don't have to worry about that. But we do have to tell it where to look, so we put that command back in where FFmpeg is. And then on the next line, because it's running through line by line, that's how it fires, is we put the command we're going to do. So this is the command I showed earlier. And essentially all this thing is going to do is redirect wherever the command prompt opens to this directory, fire the command. And I could you know, attach on a frame rate here, or I could attach on a certain number of frames to capture. And that command is done. And then back here in the task scheduler, all I need to do really is I need to pick up this file that I've made. So in my case, it's over here. I'm gonna say run that. And if I really wanted to, I don't think I have to, but if I really wanted to, I could say it needs to, s well, I'm gonna leave that alone because the command tells it where to go. <laughs> so that's really all I need to do and then I would click OK. And I would have a task that fires off at the time I set it to do. Another cool thing that's neat about the trigger is that you can set it not just on a schedule, but at startup, at login. Those are kind of cool because you could treat this as kind of a pseudo security device. Let's just say that you want to know who is logging into a computer. So you could actually, with these things in place, set this to fire so that as anybody logs in, <laughs> it'll fire this command to capture a few frames to see, okay, well, who actually signed in? It's an interesting premise. It's an interesting idea as a, as a security mechanism. And again, you would only really do this with company assets. You wouldn't just do that to somebody and then take that because that'll get you into the certain legal issues. You have to do it in a context where uh, people have signed away the right that if you're on company premise using company property that um, you're being monitored. So in those conditions, this is really cool. You could also do this on your home computer because that's your equipment. And if you have a fear that somebody's doing that to you, you have every right to do that. All right. So again, be aware of the context and the conditions of what's going on. Um, 
and how you use that. But it is really cool that you can do that and use that as a basic triggering mechanism. There's other possibilities which are just a bit too deep to dig into where you could call this from other tools. You could have motion sensors that are triggered so you could have something that triggers so many frames of recording based on events. And there's just really all kinds of directions to go. It's very exciting. And um, I'd encourage you to explore it and let me know what you find. How, how did it go for you and, and how did you use it and what worked out? So again, FFmpeg, I will put a download to it in the description. And I really hope this was helpful and eye-opening to see where this is and some things that you could potentially do on your own to try this out, all right? So if this was helpful, I would appreciate uh, a thumbs up just to let me know if it was helpful, if this resonated. Uh, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the awesome things that we will be doing in the future. And I will see you again as more things come up. Thank you very much. And don't forget to leave a comment, ask questions not just for me, but for the community, and watch another video. Thanks.